Yo! Video games. What up, dudes? Matt here from Yo Video Games, and I'm back from Summer Game Fest Play Days, where I got to go hands on with a whole bunch of titles, and I'll be sharing them with you in all the upcoming videos on this channel. So, you know, keep it here. You know, if you want to see all my impressions on everything that I was able to actually get hands on or go hands on with. And for the first title, I thought it would be kind of interesting instead to talk about not the first game I played, or not even the second, but one of the latest games I played, and that was Metaphor. RE Fantasia. Now this is obviously the Persona team's new RPG that's not Persona and I've obviously if you know me you know I'm not really a huge Persona guy though I do like RPGs so this being a sort of brand new fantasy twist on on the formula or not really you know, or just a brand new IP in general you know I wanted to check it out I was actually very interested in it so thank you know thank you Sega for making that happen and you know I'll just dive right in I'm not going to go over all the uh, intricacies of the battle system or information you probably have already been able to gather already from other people. I'm just going to kind of give you more of my like actual hands-on impressions. Uh, this is B-roll footage provided by Sega um, at the event. So, you know, that's what you're seeing here. You're not seeing my actual hands-on here, but yeah, I'll just tell you about it anyway. So, there are three demos that were in the, the metaphor. Um, I guess demo, three demos within a demo, yo dog. And each one kind of focused on a different thing. You know, one was focused on sort of the, the prologue and one is focused on just the general dungeon crawling aspect. And one is, gives you a little bit of time to see what your hub looks like and then also fight like a, a, a boss battle. So first one is called scenario mode and, and that one, you know, it's really close to the beginning of the game. I don't even know exactly everything that's going on, but it's kind of clear from the beginning that, you know, the main protagonist character, he has a companion, much like Morgana, much like Teddy, only in this game it's a, it's a little fairy. Um, interestingly, they're not as anywhere near as sort of like cutesy or bubbly or mascot like as the Persona games, which is actually kind of a refreshing change of pace because it seems like it would have been a really easy thing to do just to turn the fairy character into some like overly bubbly you know cutesy anime character um, but no they actually play it very straight which is actually pretty cool to see you get from from the get-go you you get the sense that that the game story and themes are heavily involved around all the different um, sub races within the world of metaphor you know people who have like horns people who have like cat ears or, or animal ears of some sort um, so like apparently or, or fairies or humans or elves and, and apparently none of them get along so the, the gist from the, the demo was that like the big the world of metaphor is very much divided between the the different like all the different races basically not liking each other which is good because i think it's it's always good when when you have a really strong you know hard theme that like has a lot of relatability one thing i was taken aback by a bit was that the main character actually does talk so not only do you select what he's going to respond to in questions but the character voice acts his own responses so that was actually nice to see i know that's not always the case but it is nice to see the main character actually talk and you know have a little bit of a personality here of course also you still get to choose what the responses are there is an interesting part in in the early prologue where they're they're trying to sleep and then the fairy wants to read this book that the main character has and the book is is a fantasy book and the fantasy book describes what is our modern real world here you know with with tall glass buildings and cars and all this other stuff and and how in the world of metaphor the fantasy book is a book about daily life as we know it here although it's a very rose tinted version of it where everyone is is happy and gets along and so there's kind of an interesting thing going on there anyways we're riding in the back of like a horse-drawn carriage we get basically sidetracked we go into this tower where a bunch of soldiers are basically being attacked and the interesting thing is you see this really weird bizarre monster creature thing uh, attacking all these soldiers and they call it a human so the word human uh, kind of denotes monster in metaphor I'm sure that's gonna lead to something very obvious going forward but like yeah even the, the all the big giant like weird creature monsters are called humans in the game and then You'll notice as we're going through the tower, there's these weird things where like there's this monster that's like a bunch of legs sticking out of an egg and then like a sword sticking through it. And it's called like a homo, uh, like egg sapien or something. It's got like some weird name where, where they're using like the Latin uh, beginning, you know, like cause you know, homo erectus, homo sapien, homo, you know, whatever. So again, like they're very leaning heavily into the idea that like humans are like these mythological weird 
bad creatures. I'm sure that's going to be a big part of the game going into hell. The game's called Metaphor. So that all that being said, how it is the actual combat and progression. And this is where it's actually very, very similar right off the bat. I mean, obviously it looks really good. Um, but like, yeah, it is still a turn-based combat. It still uses a lot of similar things. Although there's the job class system is actually pretty seems very different or at least seems to take the place of certain things you would expect from a persona game and then in this game and the one thing i will say is when you do say do a job class um, it'll actually give you a recommended uh list of of equipable object or items like accessories do you want to like we we recommend oh you're going to switch to a brawler class we recommend equipping these uh, armor, you know, armor accessories, uh, you know, to do that. Do you wish to do that? And you can just say yes. Yeah. So that was actually a very cool quality of life thing I just kind of wanted to throw in there. But like, yeah, the battle system turn-based functions on the same ideals. There is one difference here, and that is when you are high enough level, you can actually in real time just get rid of trash mobs. So you know, say your main character is using like a sword fighter class, uh, you know, you just you could just press X on the you know in, on the dungeon, and he'll swing his sword, and he can he can swing, he can do like a little a light combo, he can dodge out of it, and you basically use that to you can use that to kill them. But there's another practical purpose too, where say the enemy is not like a trash mob, but you do you are gonna want to you can hit him like three times, and the character will get stunned in real time and when they're stunned you you then the screen kind of flashes and freezes and it lets you know like now hey the enemy's stunned when you do that you press the y button i'll uh, y on xbox triangle on playstation and it goes into uh the the turn-based combat mode so basically like yeah a lot of games have done this before where like you hit an enemy on the field and then they get stunned and that gives you the first you know that automatically gives you the first turn in the game this game's no different although it's a little more involved because you have to like wail away on monsters a little bit before they're stunned in real time and that's why the dodge ability is still there you can also do sneak attacks so like if you go up and like sneak attack something in the back you'll, you'll like, stun it in one hit and it'll be really effed up you know when you go into the combat so that's actually pretty fun i don't want to like get too far into say the intricacies because one it, it was it was a demo there was about you know 15 to 30 minutes for each segment of the demo so again like the first part was the scenario part which we were going to the top of the tower to fight this human we met up with another character who will become a, a party member later on in the game and um you know as we're fighting this big giant i don't know what to call it it's it's like a big floating object with eyes and legs that are holding blades or blades are biologically connected to its limbs that you're fighting in the air um, you know, you, you one of the one of the characters you meet, Stroll. He he goes to he's gonna honorably die defending you know his fellow swordsman, and that's when you get the very classic persona moment where like you know you awaken your stand. Only this time it's not your, you you physically become the being. So you get to see that, and you know, it should be in the footage. And yeah, you you have that. I, I guess you could call it your persona awakening a moment. So that also happens in this game. The other demo was just strictly like a dungeon uh, with some side questing you could do with the dungeon. Uh, but again, it's it's very much like you have like this one singular sort of screen outside of a dungeon where you can talk to your companions, but you can't even like control the camera outside. And then you, it's just like one small area, and then you go into the dungeon, and then you have obviously have control of the camera after that. So this is the one thing where i will say that it's the slight sort of disappointment is that it's very much a persona game also in the sense that like this is not a game there is a world map but it, but it's it's literally a map it's a map in your ship you have this weird house moving castle like hub that that roams around the world and you you pick spots on a map and then it's going to say like hey it's going to take three in-game days to travel there and then while you're traveling there, you can go around your hub. You can, you know, talk to your friends. You can build up certain things you do, cooking, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah, that's basically your home. And you, you really start to see, like, there's a lot of, like, like similar UI elements to it that are like, oh, okay, yeah, it's, it should feel very familiar to those who are familiar with the Persona 3, 4, 5 games. And that's where, again, my, I have a slight little disappointment in that there's, it seems to be, it's towns and dungeons that you get to actually on foot roam around in. And then when you're selecting an area on the world map, it's just so you pick a spot and then your, your castle sort of moves to it. So my only thing is I kind of wish the Persona team would dream a little bigger because um, it still does feel like you're, you're, you're still doing calendar maintenance, you're still doing sort of, you know, uh, building up, a, a, you know, subsystems, you're still, it's still a dungeon crawler at its heart, at its core, 
the game is still kind of technically a dungeon crawler, although this one definitely seems to have a little more um, going for it, because you're not going to be in one town the whole time, you're not going to be in one place the whole time, you actually are going to travel to different areas of this of this metaphor world, and that's exciting, that's actually cool to see. Uh, I th and the one thing I haven't talked about at all, and, and I think it's it, the thing that immediately I thought was amazing is the music. The music is, is fantastic. It's one of the best games at the show as far as music that I heard, probably the best sounding game. Uh, it, it goes for this uh, like Italian opera style, which makes sense when you think about the title. And I kind of like that because, you know, Persona was always sort of like really heavily involved in some form of jazz. This is going for like opera, and that's pretty great. The battle system is goofy as hell, though. Um, you'll you'll hear it pretty pretty quickly, and you'll and I think people are going to be thrown off a little bit by the the battle system and like the boss battle theme initially. But then I think it's going to really warm people over. It's going to sort of become its own identity, like the way Marvel vs. Capcom 2 soundtrack is, or or like the way the battle theme in Xenoblade X is. Where yeah, this sounds weird and goofy at first, but I think over time you're going to hear it so much, and people are people are going to start like chanting it themselves, like you know, for fun. So. Uh, but otherwise, the music is fantastic in this game. It's it's really nice to see, you know, as they're called in this Studio Zero, it's really nice to see them not do jazz. Nothing against jazz, but they've done it. They've done a lot of it. So seeing them go into a more fantasy and, and, and a very much a opera direction was actually really fantastic. It's a really standout feature. It's something I, I just definitely want to like point out. You know, say so that was really good. The boss fight was was cool because it was, you know, it, uh, like Persona, like Shin Megami, like the the origins of this whole thing. You know, the the weak the boss, the weaknesses are really good. Like, you know, bosses aren't just when they have a weakness, it's not just a weakness. It's like critically important to use that and exploit it, and that's pretty fun. It does have like a, a row system, so there's like a front row and a back row where, you know, if you at any time using the D-pad, you can move your characters to the front or the back of a of a line. Of, of fighting and the back you you have <clears throat> you have the damage that you d dish out but you also you know get half the damage taken to you so and then like you'll have certain moves where it'll it'll like say cure everyone in the front row or cure everyone in the back row where like you have to like decide where you're gonna move people because some spells have like effect only the line the front line or the back line so there's a tiny bit of little strategy there so it's it's not it's not entirely just you don't have to th you know, it's just not entirely turn based in, in the sense of like it's just here's a couple menus that's it um, there is dual tech dual tech attacks they're called synthesized attacks where you basically can take up two people's uh, moves for one big giant attack where they combine they basically co combine their abilities or combine elements and they can be very 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 good so that's kind of fun too to have synthesized attacks where you know sort of risk reward take two two people's turn for one turn but it's one big turn but like if it if it's really good if it really hits a boss's weakness it's hey stun the boss and they just they lose their turn so bosses tend to have a tendency to go twice or three times or they'll even do stuff where they'll give themselves moves there's weird there are very weird status ailments like a character will feel sick so they can't actually cast a spell like just just very weird you know all these shin megami isms are still there however i will say generally speaking it felt a lot easier than say sort of classic era Shin Megami or even Shin Megami Tensei 5. So if you were kind of hoping this might be maybe was a little bit more of a challenging, you know, throwback, it's not. It's it's not. It's it's definitely a game that that knows it's probably going to be taking a lot of people who are more recent fans of the Persona series. So this was definitely like the boss fight, even though it was like the hardest ranked part of the demo. I you know, I beat the boss. It's fine. Um, I, I, I I don't think you're going to get like this insane punishing challenge here. The only thing I don't know is I don't know if the main character dies in this game, if that's an instant game over. That I don't know. It's definitely that case for Shin Megami Tensei Five, but you already know that because that game's been out. So, yeah, I don't know. Otherwise, though, I'm actually looking forward to this title. I think I'll actually play it. I think this is a game that I'm actually going to enjoy going through when it actually does release uh, later, later in October. Um, yeah, this is it. It, for someone who couldn't get into the, the sort of uh, modern day high school setting of Persona, is this enough to sort of win me over? It's definitely enough to, to win me over to take a look and want to actually play the game. Like I actually want to like, I want to buy the game and I actually want to play the game and 
and check it out. I don't know if I'll be warmed over entirely, but that's impossible to tell from a demo, and that would be unfair to the demo to, to give me that sort of like, oh, this is going to be the best thing ever from you know an hour of playtime. But anyways, that's my thoughts on Metaphor from a person who was never really a big Persona guy. I'm actually kind of digging this. This is actually pretty cool. I think you guys should check it out. It's, it's looking hot, so it might be one of the be better RPGs this year. So yeah, let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you on the channel. Later, dudes.